In this lesson, we'll continue our review of Reading Test 7, Section 1. We are still on the first passage, questions 7 through 10. If you recall, this is the passage about Silas Marner, who was this notorious miser and hoarded the gold, and then the gold was stolen, and shortly thereafter, he adopted this young girl, Epi, and it really it, it allowed him to have a new perspective to re-enter in, in life and have a new understanding of the world around him. And so let's take a look at question number seven. So here we have a specific question. What function does the second paragraph serve in the passage as a whole? And so this is giving you reference on, on where to find the evidence. So it is a type of specific question. And again, always look to paraphrase the second paragraph. So just let's just review the second paragraph, which is 30 to 52. All right, so it starts here. And when the sunshine grew strong and lasting, so the buttercups were thick in the meadow, Silas might be seen in the sunny midday or in late afternoon when the shadows were lengthening under the hedge rose, strolling out with uncovered head to carry Epi. So it's describing in nature his interaction with Epi. She toddled to pluck the flowers. She was calling Dad Dad's attention, bring him flowers. She would turn and eat some. So more in detail here, sitting on the banks in this way, Silas began to look for the once familiar herbs again, the leaves, their unchanged outline, outline and markings lay on his palm. There was a sense of crowding remembrance from which he turned away timidly, t timidly taking refuge in Epi's little world that lay lightly on his enfeebled spirit. And so this really is just more evidence, this whole paragraph of how Epi restored him, All right? Again, he was, he was really locked in his own world, hoarding the gold, but now he's re-exploring. And it, I think this last line really describes it well, this paragraph. There was a sense of crowding remembrance from which he turned away timidly. He was taking refuge. He was really epi. This little girl was saving him. And he, that lay lightly on his enfeebled spirit. He was feeble and weak from guarding the gold. So let's take a look at question number seven. So what function does this paragraph represent? It presents the particular moment at which Silas realized that Epi was changing him. This is a little too extreme. There's not evidence of a very specific moment where he had some type of epiphany. It highlights Silas's love for Epi by depicting the sacrifices that he makes. Again, sacrifices that really isn't, isn't given in that paragraph. It illustrates the effect that Epi has on Silas by describing the interaction between them. And this is a broad general choice, definitely the best one. Lots of detail on how they interact and how he now is starting to see the world again. All right, let's take a look at eight. And let's see, eight and nine, I'm just gonna go back. See, this is a two-part question. So always get in the habit We'll scan at the next question. If it's a two-part question, you want to independently find the evidence and then answer. And so let's read the question for eight. In describing the relationship between Epi and Silas, the narrator draws a connection between Epi's what? And we know that the answer will be between, it's really almost the whole paragraph, between one and 57. So we're really looking for detail describing the relationship. And, you know, after you've answered a few of these questions, I think you have a much better idea of what this passage is about. In the beginning, it's just giving detail and, and sort of narrating what happened. And we already read paragraph two, the interaction. Usually a question like this, you're gonna to find toward the end because it's already described the interaction and then it's sort of, it's just summarizing it. And so if we look toward the end as the child's mind was growing into knowledge and his mind was growing into memory, as her life unfolded, his soul long stupefied in a, cold narrow prison was unfolding too and trembling gradually into full consciousness so this is really good detail here and this is the answer 53 to 57 so let's go back and read eight that's really in what we just read describing how he was re-emerging into life all because of this little girl and you can see now that the answer for eight is b she really allowed him to expand his awareness and his increasing engagement for life 
And let's just go back and look at it again just to reinforce it. As the child's mind was growing into knowledge, his mind was growing into memory, her life unfolded, and his soul, long stupefied, was unfolding too and trembling gradually into full consciousness. It's almost trembling because it, it's been so long and now he's, he's slowly reemerging. And so for question number nine, we answered eight. It's definitely B, expanding his awareness. And for nine, it is D. And the last question, number 10, for this passage, this is what I call a vocab or a word in context. And you just, again, want to look for evidence that would reinforce and try to predict these. See if you can come up with it independently. And we know fine is not too difficult of a word, so it might be a secondary meaning of it. Let's take a look in like 65 and try to predict what fine means. Okay. So here it is. Also, by the time Effie was three years old, she had developed a fine capacity for mischief and for devising ingenious ways of being troublesome, which found much exercise not only for Silence's patience, but her, for his watchfulness and penetration. And so she had this fine capacity for mischief. You always want to try to predict it, but she really had this, this tendency, and fine is really emphasizing that she was all, almost very sort of a sh acute or had this sharp capacity for finding little trouble, not serious trouble, mischief, devising these really clever ways of being troublesome, which found much exercise for Silas's patience. So if you look at the answer, we're really looking for some type of like a sharp tendency. And we see acceptable or delicate, ornate means sort of ornamental or decorative. It's really just keen, right? Keen really means I had this sharp sense. So this keen mind, and the answer here is D.